Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here as always. Guys, we're getting the Goldilocks scenario. We're going to talk about what that is and what that means. Let's dive into it. Trade Genius. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out, what you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening. Okay, Bob, got a couple of data points here to share with the folks, but you think firmly now this is the Goldilocks scenario. Bitcoin might be in agreeing with you. It's pumping pretty good today. Yeah, so, you know, the expectation for us is that we're going to have a, a summer ramp job. And what data elements do we need for them to be able to construct that scenario for us? Number one, we need core PCE. The narrative is that it's falling. We got that today. That's the first slide. Even though it's still 3.6%, inflation's not going anywhere, but they latch on to narratives, okay? It's not the number that counts and what was expected that counts. Right on the heels of that, we had the GDP. GDP report that came out and GDP is still soft, okay, but it was higher than expected. So they're saying, okay, inflation's abating, growth is is accelerating, but what do we need to start a fire? We need kindling, and that kindling is M2 money supply growth. And remember, the stock market is not the economy. The economy is not the stock market. The stock market loves M2. And you got M2 that has gone positive, I think, Phil, for the first time in four years. And so that is huge. And what that all means to us is that money is being pumped in. It's not going to go into the economy. It's going to go right into risk assets. And here comes our summer ramp job. And like you said, Phil, Bitcoin always sniffs this stuff out first, and I, and I think it's the uh, it's it, that's the flame that's going to start the forest fire for the summer uh, stock market rally. Yeah, and keep yeah. in mind too, it's been lagging behind the stock market in terms of like new all time highs. Right, we uh, we have not seen one while the S and P five hundred has made new all time highs. So what I think is going to happen is this like two plus month consolidation that we've seen in Bitcoin after it first moved up to seventy four k. I think is coming to an end here. So maybe we're seeing that. Now, ultimately, one of these moves higher here is going to clear 69K uh, for the last time, at least for this cycle. And then uh, we're expecting that to push up. So, uh, and I actually think that Bitcoin will lead us into the final highs of this, this entire cycle. But you're right, M2 did turn up, don't have the chart handy here, but it, it went positive again after being negative. And Bitcoin's extremely sensitive to that and extremely sensitive to the dollar. Uh, the dollar chart, don't have that up either. But, you know, what I'm expecting here, Bob, is we have a pop yesterday and that put a lot of pressure on everything if dollar uh, continues to push back down i think it has a date with 100 on the dxy and i think that's going to give us our initial push breaking 100 actually should be the blow off part of this move uh, and that would take us you know like we've been saying toward the election uh, but whether that's august or september we'll have to see you know if that's the highs in the market but i wouldn't be fading i wouldn't be bearish here that's for sure i know we talk macro bearish and i think there's a lot of bearish uh, red flags that are forming but uh, in the stock market you know that tends to uh, happen, you get these bearish uh, uh, signals in the market, whether it's the consumer or you know other things that are basically uh, telling us that under the hood it's not so good. But you will oftentimes get a blow off move, and the yield curve is still inverted. So it, when that starts to go positive, and we're not there yet, <clears throat> we've been holding sideways for quite a while. We are getting closer, but we're not there yet. So I think until that goes positive, you have to stay uh, with the viewpoint that this market is going to push higher, and that could mean S and P 500 at 6,000 or higher in Bitcoin north of 100K. Yeah, and look, you know, going into a Fed meeting, I think it's on June 11th, this is the data that they're looking at. This is the last data they have. They're saying, okay, inflation is abating. Growth is good, but not great. Money supply is good. You know, no need to tighten. Kashkari, uh, that knucklehead, uh, you know, he's he's out there basically providing a like exit liquidity for Wall Street instead of informing the public. And they're not going to do anything. And I think they're going to be dovish for the summer. 
Yeah, I, I would agree with that. All right, guys, well, let us know your thoughts yeah. on today's content. Do you think that we are going to pump into the election? Let us know in the comments below. If you need help navigating these markets, check out our stuff over at tradegenius.co. We have a few packages and those can get you into the room with Bob and I, and we'll help you navigate what should be a very volatile, crazy, and wild ride into the rest of the year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bob. We'll get you guys on the next video. Bye. Hey, genius.